Good day, everyone. My name is Mary Ann, and I'm here to show you another block that you can make today, a quilt block. This is called a disappearing four patch. If you were with us for a previous session, you saw the disappearing nine patch. This is a little bit different. You're going to start out by getting four seven inch blocks, and you want two of them to be solid, and you want two of them to be a print. Um, the prints can either be the same print like I did, or they could be different print. You can have one print here and a different print here. Um, you're going to take one of the prints and one of the solids and sew them together. So I've cut the seven inch blocks and I've got two solid reds and then I have the two print fabrics. And what we're going to do right now is sew a red to the print and we're going to do the same thing with the next red in the print. And you can chain sew it. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to sew these together. And then I'm going to, without cutting my thread, just go right ahead and, and sew the next one. Two blocks are together. I'm going to go ahead and sew the next two. And we're sewing them good side to good side. Now we're going to go ahead and snip them apart. Set the seams by ironing on them. It looks like my cutting is a wee bit off. I'm going to kind of um, straighten these blocks off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and iron towards the dark side, which for me is going to be the red. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to press it towards the red. And I'm going to check the back. Make sure it's going the right direction, the whole seam. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other set. And then the next step is to join the two sets that we just sewed, alternating the reds and the um, greens, I'll call it, but the print and the solid. So we're going to sew these two sets together. And I, again, I do pin the seam line to kind of get them nested up together the way they should be. Some people were able to do it without doing it. They just kind of eyeball it, but I do like to pin them. Okay, that's looking good. So when I'm sewing these two halves together, the two sets of two blocks, because we alternated the darks and the print, the solids and the print, I should say, um, the seams are automatically going in opposite directions, which is what we want. We don't want a lot of bulk at the seam at the intersection.
ahead and set this scene. And it doesn't matter which way you press this scene because you've got the same thing on both sides. So now we have the four patch that we're talking about, and we want to get it to look like this. So we're going to take our ruler, and we're going to measure one side, one inch on each side of that seam line. And use your fabric marker if you have one. That's going to be my cut. We're going to do that on each side of the seam, on all, on both seams. You may have noticed I'm using a rotating cutting mat, and if you have one, that's definitely a great tool to have with this particular block. If you don't have a rotating uh, mat, you can still make the block. You just have to be super careful. It's a little bit trickier. But with the rotating mat, it makes it nice and easy. And this is what I mean by a rotating mat. This mat can turn around if it's not hitting my board. And if, so if I want to cut this way, I can cut, and then if I want to do the next direction, I can spin it around. So great mat for this type of block. Now what I'm going to do, I, I made the lines, but I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm going to go ahead and cut along each of those lines I just made. And this is why this ruler is nice because you don't have to move your fabric around. So the line of the fabric just moves itself around. Okay, one more. On the one inch, I'm putting my one inch line on the seam line. Okay. So as you can see, my fabric's moving around too, even though I have the revolving mat. So what you need to do, especially if you're using just a regular mat, you just need to make sure everything's back in place before you do your next cut. And we've got two more cuts to do. Okay. And the last cut. So all these cuts were one inch from the seam line. we're left with now are the four seven inch corners, one little four patch in the middle. The logs are going to stay exactly where they are. We're going to take, it tells you right here, um, you're going to take the top two pieces, the top two corners and swap them. So these are going to, this is going to go here, this is going to go here. Then you do the same thing with the bottom two. So we're going to swap these. And that gives you the design that you want. Then it tells you that you take the center and you turn it one turn. So there is a one turn. And now what we're going to do is sew this row, 
this row and this row, and then put the three rows together. And again, everything's a quarter inch seam. If you need to mark the pieces so you know which go where, you can put a little sticky note on them and mark them. So the rest of this top row, I match this up with this. Ready to set the seam on this and then press it open. And I'm considering the red as my dark color, the solid color. So I'm pressing everything towards the red. Okay, so we have the first section made. Now we're going to do, I'm going to do the bottom section now. last block on the bottom section here. This one looks like it has a little tiny bit of a hump there, so I'm going to try to even that out before I go on to the middle section. Just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go on to the middle section. Okay, there is a way to turn it so that your seams will mess instead of forming a lot of bulk. I was going to have to press it the other way, but it looks like this will work. Thanks. 
So when you're putting that middle little four block one, you really want to um, try to figure out which way you can put it to make those seams and that so it's not a great big lump in the center. Okay, now we need to sew this one on. Let's see if that's going to work. No matter how you turn it, it looks like on one side you're going to have the seams together. Just make do. I pin it, but I like to check to make sure it looks like the seams are going to relatively match each other. We're our own worst critics. Somebody else who gets this as a gift or sees it at your house is not going to notice that the seams aren't perfect. Okay. 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 Okay, that came out pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and press those seams. And because these are pressed towards the right, I'm going to press these towards the Okay, now we're ready to sew the whole block together. So the important thing when you're doing that is to match up these seams with the um, seams on the next row because that little patch at the middle is a little bit hard to get in the right position if you don't have those seams matched. something like this, if you find that one of your rows is a tiny bit longer than the other, um, put that row on the bottom and the other one on the top because the bottom kind of um, gathers it, not gathers it, but makes it a little bit tighter. So that would probably make the whole block come out right. I always put the, if the one row a little bit bigger, put it on the bottom. That came out pretty good. So we'll go ahead and press that seam. And again, it really doesn't matter which way you press the seam now because you've got dark and light on the thing itself. I always check the back because, like in this instance, one of the seams turned the wrong way as I was pressing, so I like to make sure it's turned the way I want it to be turned. I'll spray a little bit now. That best press spray that I use gives you a nice, crisp seam. Gives you some body to the fabric. Okay. 
now put the next row on. Again, we're going to try to match those corners. If any of your cutting and sewing is off, it'll make it difficult to match the seams. You may have to kind of pull in the fabric a little bit to get it to go where you want, which is what I'm doing right now because they're not quite matching. On a little block like that four patch in the corner, even if you're just even an eighth of an inch off, it makes a difference. And I think when this is done, I am going to be a tiny bit off. We'll see how it turns out. Actually, that's not too far off. You can see a little bit of a deviation there. If it makes you crazy, you can take it apart and do it. If it make me crazy, it's going to stay the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to press the seams again. If you were making this to put in a quilt um, contest or something, they would look at that. But if it's for you or a friend that you're making it, I don't think anybody's going to even notice. So I'm going to even this out and I'll show you what it looks like. There's a couple of places I need to just kind of trim off a little bit. You may have noticed that my ruler slipped when I was making that cut. I do have um, a backing on it to try to prevent it from slipping, but sometimes it'll still do that. You can buy the sandpaper ones, which I don't like because for certain fabrics it'll mess up your fabric. But I use the little plastic ones and I do like those. Right now I'm just kind of squaring off this whole block. Okay. okay, so here is your disappearing four patch. It's a little bit harder than the nine patch, but I like it a lot better. It's a really fun block to make. And again, you could use it as a table topper. You could finish it off as a table topper. You could use it in a larger quilt. Um, you could use it as a table runner by putting several of them together. You can even 
take one of your prints and put it along the sides and then put the other two blocks to, you know, make two more blocks and do it. It makes a really nice table runner. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you'll try to make this block because it really is a very pretty block when it's done. Thank you for joining me today.